Good morning and welcome back to Coffee and Colorful Conversation. Happy Wednesday. I hope everyone is so far having a wonderful Wednesday, hump day. It's that day that is in the right smack dab in the middle of the week and you're questioning, did you get everything done so far that you wanted to get done? Do you have enough time to get even more done before the week ends? Um, it's a time for me to, to reflect and measure myself um, because I'm self-employed. I have no one telling me what to do, when to do it, what time to do it. So I have to be very disciplined. So this morning and last night, I always think ahead a little bit about my coffee conversation. I want it to be of value. I love that you show up every week to listen to what I have to say. And I want you to walk away with something. I don't want to just... Um, turn this into a banter, you know, just blabbing about nothing. So it was funny because I often have said, sometimes I have these weird, in the middle of the night, something will just pop into my head and I will get up and stumble around and feel for my glasses and pick up my phone and I'll type into my calendar for Wednesday at 10 a.m. a topic that popped into my mind in the middle of the night. So earlier in the week, the topic that popped into my mind, um, I laughed when I woke up this morning and looked at it, was wisdom teeth, you know, that I wanted to talk about the story about when I got my wisdom teeth out. I cannot remember why I wanted to talk about that, so I'm not going to talk about that. But my point is, my passion for this industry and for meeting with you every Wednesday is something that lives with me all the time. It's always in my brain. You know, what do people need to hear? What? How can I help someone today? So... More recently, for me, other than my random wisdom teeth story, was the date. You know, it's January 22nd. Holy crap. How did it become January 22nd? And everyone, you know, tends to reflect and measure and look at what life was like the year before on January 1st. It usually lasts until about the 10th, am I right? Usually by the 10th, you forgot that you even had a New Year's resolution, you forgot you wanted to change anything, and you fall back into your habits. So I wanted to talk about habits. Um, some, of, some habits are really, really good for you, and it's great that that is a knee-jerk reaction and you just do it without even thinking. And then other ones are so seems so innocent but can be so harmful so what does that mean so certain habits are non-negotiable brushing your teeth for me that's a non-negotiable i wake up first thing i do is use the restroom because i drink a lot of water before i go to bed and then i walk over to the sink pick up my toothbrush brush my teeth every single morning of my life and since i've been able to hold my own toothbrush that's a non-negotiable and not doing that, of course, would lead to really bad teeth, really bad breath. It would probably end many, if not all, of your friendships, and it would not be good for you, but it's something that we all do, and we don't question it. It's like an, a non-negotiable, unquestioned habit that we all do, but for each individual person, that habit can look differently. What is your favorite type of toothbrush? What kind do you use? Do you like firm bristles? Do you like soft bristles? Um, for me, I had braces, so I was told by my dentist to always use a soft bristle because when you have braces, your teeth can pull away from your gums and you can get receding gums. And I don't want to be have my teeth dangling in my head with no attachment, so I use soft bristles. Um, I have gone in and out of the habit of using a tongue scraper over the years. I didn't even know what that was. I was on vacation with a coworker and she's doing this thing on her tongue with this big metal rake thing. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is that? So when you know better, you do better. So I didn't know what a tongue scraper was. So I never scraped my tongue. And then I'm constantly reaching for mouthwash and gum and mints because we deal with the public. We want our breath to always be fresh. And it was like, oh, wow, who knew there was a tongue, tongue scraper? So one of my non-negotiable habits is my morning coffee. I talk about it all the time. You hear me bitching when something goes wrong at my on my daily walk where I go to get my coffee. And it made me really think about what I wanted to talk about today as far as when a habit starts to become, it started out innocent and positive and then it starts to become a detriment to you on a whole down the line and you didn't even realize that could happen. So 
what am I talking about? So every morning since August 5th, I wake up early and I walk on the beach. And it is now a non-negotiable. If it's windy and cold, if it's raining, I go no matter what the weather is. And it's actually really cold in Florida right now. So it's like, oh, do I really want to go? But once I go, it's like the Mel Robbins five-second rule. You can talk yourself out of anything that you don't want to really do. And you can also talk yourself into it by doing the five-second rule. So when you roll out of bed and you're talking yourself out of going to the gym or you're talking yourself out of doing some, eating a healthy breakfast, whatever your resolve was the night before, just as soon as you catch yourself trying to talk yourself out of doing that positive thing, just count backwards, five, four, three, two, one, take a deep breath and do it. Force yourself to do it. My son started doing it with, he goes to a boxing class and he's like, mom, he'll call me, mom, I did the Mel Robbins five second rule and I went to the gym and I feel great. You always feel great afterwards. It's thinking about the dread of doing something that talks you out of it. So I've been going on this walk since August 5th. And because I'm not behind the chair anymore, I've become that person that never has cash ever. I don't have any access to cash. I'm not doing hair. I'm not, you know, entertaining those wonderful gratuities that I used to always have a wad of cash in my purse from just little tips throughout the day that I just, you know, I never took the cash to the bank. I used it for my Starbucks runs, for little Marshall's trips, you know, all that. It was nice to have cash on hand. And my husband and I were just talking um, yesterday. We went out to eat and we said, you know, we really have to start hitting the bank or the ATM and having some cash on us because we feel bad when we have to tip on a credit card at a restaurant because we're like, does that server really get that entire gratuity? Does that business have to take all kinds of stuff out of it? And it doesn't really get to that person. So um, I do my morning coffee, uh, my walk to the Don Cesar Hotel. It's a beautiful five-star hotel on the beach. And knowing that that is my destination, that that beautiful hotel with that beautiful view of the ocean and the, you know, the oceans there and the sounds and the birds and the palm trees. I know that that's my reward at the end of this brisk walk on the beach. Um, so I get there and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to have my coffee. And I walk in and some days there's a huge line, some days there's no line, but there's never, I shouldn't say never, there has rarely been a visit to that coffee shop that hasn't left me feeling pissed off. So it's my reward at the end of my walk. It's my coffee, my favorite thing in the whole wide world. Um, notice I said thing, not person, not experience, not loved one. It's a thing and it's a ritual that I love. I savor that, the warmth of the cup and just the smell and just that first sip. There's nothing like it. Um, and I've always had issues with this place, you know? So my husband, it's the end of the year, you know, at this past end of December. And unfortunately for me, American Express has this wonderful thing where they categorize everything into chunks. And it's like food and entertainment, travel, you know, business expense, like they categorize everything the way I would not do. I'm not a spreadsheet, QuickBooks kind of person. So my husband said, do you have any idea how much your little walks have cost you this year? And I was like, no, I don't even think about it. It's basically like, five dollars and whatever cents a day so he showed me and it was an insane amount of money and why am i telling you this i'm telling you this because people will say to me oh i can't afford to join your membership or oh i can't afford to go to that class oh i would love to go to your retreat but i can't afford it and my retreat for you to get on a plane fly to beautiful sunny florida in february and sit in on this two-day amazing experience of you know, we're going to do like mindset exercises, of course, hair color and, and usable tools for in the salon, but it's going to be more about taking a time out for yourself and starting the year on a positive note and looking at things differently. It's more just like, you know, taking a deep breath, taking time for yourself. And I want it to be everyone that's coming. I want it to be an annual thing for them. I want them to you know, my destination of I got to the Don, I get my coffee. I want that retreat to be somebody's every year thing that's the reward for a job well done for the year. So, you know, flight, hotel, meals, 
Ubers, rental cars, what, however you choose to do it. That retreat is way less than what I spent on just one cup of coffee every single day on my walk on the beach. So when he pointed that out to me, I was like, oh, that is a lot. That is crazy. And um, sometimes when you have a habit and a routine, something really negative has to happen to shake you out of that routine. So, so far, it's been a semi, almost perfect, very pleasant experience. A couple things here and there. Oh, our credit card machine is down. Now, this past week, their machine was down. Now, this is a five-star hotel. This is like Ritz-Carlton, Four Seasons, quality hotel. And I go in to get my coffee and I have my card and they're like, oh, before you order, we just want to let you know our card, our card reader's down. And I'm like, okay, I can handle that once. Everybody has that happen. We have it happen in our salons. I've had it happen. But I never say to the client when they come in, oh, by the way, you can't have your hair done today because my machine is down. It's my problem, but now it's your problem. You're not getting your hair done because my machine's down. So being a five-star property, they have to have a backup plan. They have to have a when our card machine is down, this is what you do to not inconvenience the client. They don't have that. So if you have you know, a suite or you're in a salon, what is your backup plan when all things don't work as planned, when your online booking is down, when they can't make a purchase? For us, we simply took the client's number down, their expiration date and all that. We wrote it down on a, you know, just a black and white regular composition copy book. And we said, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to destroy this paper. We're not going to hold on to your numbers, but we don't want you to not be able to have your services done and our machines down and we'll be able to, you know, manually put it in or call it in or whatever. Like that's our problem. So we don't make the client suffer for it. So, you know, that happened literally five days in a row last week. So I'm the type of person, I believe the universe gives us signs and signals. Things happen for a reason. People are brought into your life randomly for a reason. Did you ever meet somebody that you're like, wow, I was really meant to meet her. Like that conversation needed to happen. And I may never see him or her again, but they meant, they were meant to be in my path. So for me, when something keeps happening over and over again, I'm like, okay, Elaine, you're on autopilot. All you care about is your damn cup of coffee. You're ignoring all these signs. You need to pay attention. So on day five of our card reader is down, I was like, oh, seriously? So I go to the ATM. I have my card that I never use. I'm nervous using an ATM. I don't even know how to push the buttons because I just don't do it. So I go and it says, you know, um, just to let you know, this machine charges a fee of $2.50 for any withdrawal. So I'm like, okay, now my $5 and whatever cents cup of coffee that's already exorbitantly priced for a drip coffee, now just turned into $7 and whatever cents. And I could get the same thing at a Wawa or 7-Eleven or wherever, whatever part of the country you're from for probably $1.80 or something. So now I'm getting a little pissed. So I go in and I'm like, all right, if I'm going to pay $2.50 more for the coffee, I'm getting a latte today. I'm going to go all out and get the latte and not the drip coffee because I don't make that at home. So I walk up and the gentleman who I see every morning who drives me crazy as it is, has a cup of coffee that he poured for someone else and it's sitting on the counter and he kind of looks around to see who's looking, which I'm looking, I'm standing there. He didn't see me. And he opens up the container that the big drip coffee is in for everybody else that's coming for the rest of the day, the thing they push down, you know, the typical coffee urn. And he looks around and he opens up the lid off of the coffee that's sitting there and he pours it into the big container to reuse it. On, and I was like, oh my God, like I did not just see that. And I'm thinking if he just did that in front of me, what is he doing when I'm not looking? Is he going to the bathroom and not washing his hands? Is he counting money and then touching the pastries? Like what other things are going on behind the scenes at this place that I'm not seeing? So something crazy like that, and it's not crazy, but it's just unsettling, but something like that had to happen for me to reevaluate this habit of mine. Number one, it's costing me, you know, a lot of money over a year that I could spend on a fabulous trip, retreat, something for me to refill my cup in other ways. I can make coffee at home. Um, the money, 
the annoyance of their system being down and just getting in that mood of like, my husband teases me. He's like, you think that you're the manager of that hotel? Cause I always come home and I'm like, oh, they need to do this. They need to do that. Like I'm always trying to fix it and it has nothing to do with me. So I thought about it and I'm like, I don't want to stop taking that walk because of the negative experience of the coffee part of it. So I have two choices. I can either take my walk, don't have the coffee, walk there, still have that be my destination, walk home, which isn't ideal for me because unfortunately I'm so addicted to coffee that if I go past a certain time of the morning and don't have that first cup, I get a migraine and I cannot get rid of it for the rest of the day. That's a whole other coffee chat, but it happens and I know that. So I'm like, all right, if I do that, then I'm going to go too long without my coffee. So then I started to bring coffee with me. I'm like determined to make this habit stick because I really enjoy these walks. So I was bringing it in a little um, swell bottle and carrying it with me and sitting and drinking my coffee there. But I'm really into my coffee. So I was like, oh, now I taste the metal of that thermos and it's not a good taste. So I'm like, all right, now, now I'm packing a mug I was bringing a mug in a Ziploc baggie and my thermos, and I was pouring the coffee into the mug so I had that complete experience. But the coffee wasn't staying hot enough, so I went back to buying it at the hotel. So I was trying every which way. And then yesterday I was like, you know what? Think about your commute to work. When you start driving in the same direction every single day, you become, you have blinders on. You become blinded by everything around you. You don't even see what's around you because you're so on autopilot, just doing what you've always done. So I, I thought about it and I'm like, if I just walk in the opposite direction, there's so many different things to look at. There's different hotels, there's different little beach bars, there's different little restaurants that I can go have my coffee where I'm gonna meet different people, I'm gonna have a totally different perspective, I'm still gonna get my exercise in, I'm still gonna get my coffee, and it may even be better than what I've been doing since August. But if that credit card debacle didn't happen, I'm so on autopilot now to do that walk, to make that de my destination, to see those same faces. But what are you doing yourself in the salon that's equal and as, as much affecting you as my beach walk on autopilot? I hear people all the time saying, oh, I glaze all my blondes with 9V and clear. All my blondes. How can 9V and clear be the answer to all your blondes? That's a lazy glazing scenario. That's not thinking. That's just saying, oh, 9V always worked in the past. So let me just slap this on every head that walks in the salon and make it my go-to. Like that's not going to give you, that's not going to make you a well-known colorist and the go-to person in your area. Oh, she's the 9V and clear girl. You know, how many times have you reached for that 7N in your dispensary because you know it's safe? The biggest jump in hair color, in my opinion, is between level six and seven. If you reach for a four and you should have had a five, is it a big deal? Not usually. If you reach for a five when you should have had a four, it, you might get a little bit of a glimmer of a hot root, but to the eye of the client, they probably won't even notice. And the next visit, you see it and you just drop it back down. So there's certain things that in hair color and in your salon should be non-negotiable if they're not. And one of them being stellar customer service. You should be your client's dinner conversation. I shared that in my Tip Tuesday on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, every Tuesday I give a tip. This past Tuesday was um, be your client's dinner conversation, be their water cooler conversation, be their lunch conversation. These people, Every person that you touch and do their hair interacts with a minimum of 20 other people in their life. They have friends, they have coworkers, they have neighbors, they have women at the gym, they have you know so many connections to other people. And I find at this age, there's not a whole hell of a lot to talk about anymore because I'm, I'm the type of person that I don't talk about other people, I don't gossip. And I'm really, really trying not to be judgmental. That's something that I've been struggling with for a few years. So when you're not judging and you're not gossiping, you're pretty goddamn boring. There's nothing to talk about. So I want people whose hair that I do, I want to be front of mind to them. 
that when they're interacting with other people, they say, oh my gosh, I just got my hair done by Elaine and, you know, she does a great job on my hair, but oh my God, she's funny. Like the story that she told me about her husband and, you know, him being in the suicide scrubs at the hospital, like just whatever story that I shared behind the chair, you know, I'm not talking about other people. I'm not gossiping. It's a story that I've experienced that I think is a fun thing to share and keeping it light and fun and friendly is going to make that client, remember, they're going to walk out of the salon still laughing. They're going to be smiling. And you don't even have to make them laugh. It can be, you know, something that you saw in a newspaper article or, so, or a movie that you watched or just something to keep it light and keep that connection, but something that they're going to want to reshare. You know, people talk about how can I get a new client in my chair? I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing this. And I'm like, are you being really positive behind the chair? Are you actually sharing with your client tips on how they can style their hair at home and taking the time to give them something that they didn't know when they walked in, when they leave? Like, are they leaving with a nugget? Are they leaving with more than they came in with? Are they understanding how to use a product differently? Um, you know, a lot of us are beat up with the retail saying we give up, we, we raise the white flag, forget it, we surrender, Amazon, you win. But are you taking that product and saying, you know, for me, I'm, I'm a one hit wonder. I use one product on my hair at all times and I'm a hairdresser. I have fine hair that gets very flat up here. So when I get out of the shower, the first thing I do is I put in a little bit of, um, it's a 10 light. So are you explaining to your client, you know, your hair's on the finer side. I'm using the light version of this detangling leave-in conditioner on you. And I suggest you do the same at home. Another tip is, you know, your hair doesn't really get tangly up at the root. It gets tangly from the mids to the ends. So when you're using a detangling spray, try to concentrate from the mids to ends because you don't want to give this fine flat hair up here any other reason to be flat and droopy. Those are the things that the client is going to leave with and be like, oh, wow, that was a different experience. She actually cared about me replicating the style at home. Um, so <clears throat> the whole experience in the salon should be, you know, if you're charging five-star prices, it should be a five-star experience. For me, having a roll of paper towels in the restroom of the salon it just looks like, you know, the bathroom at KFC or McDonald's or, you know, I'm sure some of them have that air dryer, which supposedly that spreads germs even more and you're not supposed to use them. But a big bulky paper towel bounty roll to me is like, can that dry your hands? Yes. Is it effective? Yes. But a hand rolled little hand towels on a silver tray in the restroom is an upscale experience. We have those little drops in the bathroom. Our restroom in my former salon is right in the middle of this. Like, it's not like a private down the hall, out of the way space. So, you know, nature duty calls, nature calls. And there's going to be a time that a client has to use your restroom for more than a quick pee. And she's probably mortified that she has to do that there and that the whole salon is going to talk about her when she leaves because they're like, holy crap, she really lit that place up. It happens. So we buy those little um, poopery drops that are on the tray behind the toilet. And the client, when they go in and they pull their pants down, they see those drops and they're like, oh, great. I don't have to worry about blowing up the bathroom. Like it's a simple little touch. When they leave the salon and they're signing their credit card receipt, do you have a pen at your desk? Like this pen right here says Marriott Vacation Club. So when you go into your salon today, look at the pen that you're handing your client to sign that credit card receipt. Is it a chewed up pen that like somebody that works the front desk has been gnawing on with her teeth and now you're handing it to that client to sign that receipt and now you're charging them, you know, $100 for a service that other salons are doing for $30? You can't have a chewed up pen. That pen should be beautiful and branded. It should be the colors of your business with your logo on it, you should make that pen so beautiful and so comfortable in their hand that the client wants to steal it. You all know what I'm talking about. We were just at a hotel sitting at the bar. My girlfriend was in town and they had beautiful pens when she signed the credit card thing. And she's like, I'm taking this pen. I love this pen. 
that pen that you have at your salon should be that pen that you want to take with you. And you should have enough of them that you encourage clients to take them with you because then what's going to happen every time she pulls that pen out of her purse, she's going to go, oh crap, my roots are in. I got to call Elaine. It's going to remind her of you. It costs you like $1.20 to have a branded pen. So it's simple to be special and extra and above and beyond. But what habits have you fallen into that you don't even realize could be better because you're on autopilot? You're showing up and you're looking at your salon with your eyes, not the guest's eyes. One of the pet peeves for me is when I get my own hair done at my former salon, if I lay back in the sink and I look up and the air conditioning vents have an inch of dust in them, that's something that most salons don't pay attention to. We don't look up. We just don't. The tops of the stations, you know, if you have a station that's like this and you're wiping the mirror and you're wiping down the sides, when's the last time you took a Swiffer and went across the top? I've done it and it ain't pretty. All the dust from the lights and everything is going to land. You have hair flowing all over, blow dryers. You have all kinds of air pollutants that are roaming around there. They're landing somewhere. Are you paying attention to where they're landing? Last week I talked about towels and I got so much great response about the towels because everybody went back into work and looked at their towels and was like, oh crap, she's talking about me. Look at these towels. They have holes, they're shredded, they're a mess. The towel uh, link that I gave you, a dozen towels is $23. Isn't it worth $23 to spruce up your towels and have that client feel special when a brand new fluffy bleach proof towel is put around her shoulders instead of that spotted up, bleached out, ripped mess. Getting the client wet. We talk about, I, I love the Bib Buddy. That's my uh, tool of choice. Um, there's also Neat Neck, plastic, disposable. I prefer not to use those because it's not good for the environment to keep using that disposable plastic. The Bib Buddy just wiped down but it has Velcro and it's a vinyl bib and you put it Superman style and it goes back into the sink. So now when you're reaching underneath to get that color off the nape that we all struggle to get without drowning the client, now you have no worries, she's not gonna get wet. And I, I think the bib buddy is maybe $20 and you can use it over and over and over again. It's like those extra little simple touches that become your new non-negotiables that it's non-negotiable to have the client not have a wet back. Stop offering to take her shirt off and throw it in your client, I mean in your salon dryer to dry it. She should never have gotten wet in the first place. So if you wanna reach that level of five-star pricing, five-star service, and be the conversation at dinner, don't be the conversation at dinner because you drown your client and she looks like she just left a wet t-shirt contest. She should not be drenched. She should be able to go back to the office Staying free. You know, I see so many people on the forum saying, you know, oh, my client has to go back to work and she has a stain. I saw a stylist share that she was doing her own color and she's like, this is what salon life is like. I did my own color and now I'm driving home with it on. When I, I kid you not, her touch up was down here. She had a stain two inches thick on her skin all the way around and she's a stylist. And I'm looking at it saying, why is your face painted? Why is there two inches of red color on your face right now? And why are you driving home with two inches of red color on your face? Take the time, you know, apply it. If you had to get down there, if somebody has that Eddie Munster, you know, low um, hairline and you had to touch the skin to get it on, take a second to take a dry towel or a, you know, cotton, one of those little round cotton circles you use to take off makeup and go around and just wipe it off. Go around the tips of the ears, go on her neck. You know, your client will sit and read a magazine and they're talking and they're doing this and you walk over and they have color all over their neck. Take the time to take a hair color removing wipe and go over and wipe it off. It doesn't take a lot to stand out and be special. We get bored, we get routine, we get lazy. It's the habit that kicked in that made us stop caring about the little niceties and little extras. And trust me guys, Competition is much fiercer. People have their phones and they have those, you know, people blowing up Instagram with these beautiful hairstyles that clients didn't know that they had a choice before. 
They went to whatever salon was within a five mile radius of their home. It's the truth. When I started out in the 80s, late 80s, early 90s, your clientele, you could see on a map. You could literally take a map and say, this many blocks, this way, this way, this way is me. The salon around the corner had frontage on the main drag. They had people on the other side of the main drag go to them because they didn't go across the street and get tucked behind and find me. So location was everything in the 80s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Now you can be on the fifth floor of a Hoboken walk-up that they have to walk up five, you know, five um, sets of stairs and not be able to take an elevator to come see you if you're making the experience special enough to warrant that. You know, do you have meters outside your salon? Is that an annoyance for your clients? If it is, have a jar of change in your salon always there so that when the client's running late and she's like, oh crap, I always forget that she has meters at her salon, I have no change. People walk around like me, I'm guilty of it now, with a credit card. So if those meters don't have that app that you can pay on your app to park, now you're like in a panic and you're looking around and your morning coffee's kicking in and you're doing the pee dance, you have to pee and you can't wait to get in the salon, but you're like, I have to put money in this meter and I don't have change. And then you're frantic looking around for a store that's gonna break change for you. And most stores that have meters are annoyed with always breaking change. So have that built into your salon experience that you always have a pile of quarters to give to your client for their meter so that they can sit and relax and not have to worry about their meter. So walk in, the challenge for you today is when you go to your place of business, I want you to walk in with the eyes of a client. When you're parking, was it easy to find parking? Do you need money for the meter? Is there another way around that that you can, you know, can you make an arrangement with another business to use their parking lot and pay them monthly to have your clients be able to park easier? Can you tell your clients, which I've always, I'm sorry, employees, which I've always done, do not park in front of the salon. Leave those spots for your guests. It's something that young stylists would never think of. They go for the interview, they park right out front of the salon, which why wouldn't they? They're coming there for the first time. And then you hire them and in your, um, you know, getting them integrated into your systems and going over the employee handbook and all that, you as an owner don't even think to tell them don't park out front because you think that they're automatically going to know it, but they're not going to automatically know it. So are your stylists taking up the prime spaces outside of the salon? Are you listening to this and you're a stylist and you're like, oh crap, I've been parking right in front of the salon for five years. Because then when a client comes and they can't park, that's going to be a reason to come back or not come back for them is the ease of parking. A lot of women cannot parallel park. I was just talking to my girlfriend. She came down here for a visit and they rented this giant truck and they drove here from another part of Florida and it was like a three and a half, four hour drive. So she took the truck and went to go shopping. She loves to shop. We always go shopping, impulse shopping together to like TJ Maxx or Marshalls. And she wanted to shop and she's like, I could handle the truck on the open road on the expressway. But she said, I went and there was this awesome little place that I wanted to shop. And when I got there, they didn't have a parking lot and I would have had to parallel and I had to leave. Because she said, I just could not imagine parking. I wouldn't be able to park a pickup truck. And I'm a good parallel parker. So those are the things that you're not, most likely not paying attention to that make the difference in a loyal following and being the topic of their conversation at work. You know, standing by the water cooler. Wow, I, I just went to the salon and I pulled up and I was like anxious about the them having meters out front because it was a two-hour uh, maximum thing. I could only fill it to two hours and I knew my hair was going to take three hours and I was so anxious the whole time. And the girl came up to me and said, oh, just to let you know, we added some money to your meter. We knew that you were going to be over the two hours. When it's raining, offering to have one of the assistants or the front desk or anyone who's free in the salon take an umbrella and walk that guest to their car. It started raining after she was in your chair. She didn't know it was going to rain. I never know when it's going to rain. When it, when it rains, it rains. I never look at the forecast. I never am prepared. And I would not want to pay for a beautiful blowout and then walk out and get rained on. And we're so busy doing what we're doing, we don't even think, oh, wow, she's leaving and she's walking out into the rain. So just take a second and think about your systems 
Think about what you do differently, what you can do differently, you know, up your game on your snacks at the salon. Um, I see on the forums constantly people bitching about credit card fees. Oh my gosh, I'm going to start charging the client the fee. No, you're not. Number one, it's not legal to pass that on to a client. Number two, when you allow credit card payment, you're inviting a whole other level of clientele. That American Express client is going to spend a lot more with you than someone who's coming in with just enough cash to pay for their hair. They're going to buy that headband. They're going to buy that little mini travel blow dryer. They're going to buy that extra thing that's on impulse because you've given them the convenience of using their card. Don't turn around and charge them the fee. That's a part of doing business. So if you can't afford to pay credit card fees and you're in a solo suite, get back into a salon where the owner is going to cover that because you have no business being in business if you can't afford that little credit card fee. Um, those are the differences, you know, like just make it more convenient for your guests to do business with you because the competition is heating up and it's not as easy to keep people in your chair. And if you give them a reason to look around, they're going to find somebody who's doing it better than you're doing it. Because right now they're still coming to you because you did your, their hair for their prom. How many people do you still see? because they came to you for prom hair and then they started to want highlights and you became their first person and only person who's given them highlights. And then they hit that first gray and you're the first person to cover their gray. Well, when she turns 50 and she's a more educated consumer and she's not flying blindly and she has a little bit more money to spend, she's suddenly going to look around and see that her friends are looking a lot better than she is. So if you're not keeping up your education and you're in the habit of just slapping on that 9V and clear, you're going to force your guests to look around and see what's better. So those are my words of advice today. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Pay attention to your habits. I'm personally going to be changing my habit starting tomorrow. I am walking in a different direction and I'm having coffee in a different location. And I'm sure I'll have some fun stories to share with you um, as a result. So thanks for listening. I hope you got some little nuggets today. And I will see you all next Wednesday.